Saurabh Mukherjee is with us, CEO of Institutional Equities, Ambit Capital. Saurabh, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Good morning. Shaman, this side. You know, in your report, you write that uh, 22,000 Sensex is still in play. We're roughly at about 25, so that's about 10, 12 percent from here. And I was looking through your report, so you kind of first uh, list out all the reasons people uh, and consensus give to uh, uh, validate a bullish stance on India, and then you go on to kind of demolish all those arguments. Why don't you uh, simply put for our viewers, tell us what your underlying reason uh, for bearishness is. I think Prashant, uh, around uh, March last year, uh, when the Sensex was at 30,000, that's when we became bearish on India. It fell to us then that the, that the market had run away to, a, to an unrealistic level. And then uh, in an August, uh, August 2015, we uh, ramped up our level of bearishness and first came up with the 22,000 Sensex, uh, Sensex target. Uh, 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 since then, I think somewhere around January, uh, the market fell all the way down to 22,900 on the Sensex, rallied all the way back up to close to 26,000 and we are around 25,000. The reason I still highlight the, 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 uh, the high probability of, of a Sensex 22,000 uh, 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 target. The reason I'm doing that is this twofold. There's, there's global factors and then there's local factors. Uh, chief amongst the global factors is the fact that, uh, that the, the Western central banks are gradually indicating in their own ways, the Bank of Japan very explicitly, uh, the, the, the Fed slightly more uh, implicitly, that the limits of monetary policy have been reached. Uh, if you look at the BOJ's extraordinary announcement last week where in the face of weak macro data, they still didn't uh, ease policy further. It gives you a sense that a large central bank, which has already moved to negative interest rates, is saying that there's very little else that we can do to stimulate the Japanese economy. In June, when of second June, when the ECB policy uh, is announced, mid June, when the Fed policy is announced, I expect to see the other two big central banks take a very similar point of view that this monetary easing as the way out of jail is simply not working. So that's a global set of concerns. Uh, I think that'll that'll continue to play out as the year winds on. Back home in India, we've got a triple challenge. We've got a banking system which uh, which has gone from bad to worse, and every quarter brings more bad news. I don't think uh, uh, FI17 will be the the turning point in the cycle. I think through FI17, we will continue receiving bad news on the banking sector. Uh, it's very difficult to have a meaningful economic recovery in a country where the banking system is the banking system is ailing without uh, obvious uh, remedial uh, remedial measures being on the table. Uh, the second challenge is uh, if you look at government capex. It was very healthy last year. It was around 21% both at the center and in the states. Government capex is budgeted to, to government capex growth is budgeted to drop down to 3-4% this year. As that happens, that will exert its own drag. So yes, whilst a good monsoon could cheer us all up, I think both in, in our local economy in terms of overall economic growth improving and earnings growth improving, I think we've got fairly serious challenges. The banking system is a major concern. And uh, outside India, uh, this uh, seven, eight year run of incredibly loose monetary policy, I think seems to have reached its limits where major central banks are putting their hands up and saying there's very little else we can do here. All of that suggests to me that one should be cautious, uh, careful in these current circumstances, careful with investing their money in the stock market and hence I, uh, I highlight the Sensex 22,000 as a, as a red flag. Mm. Uh, many have pointed to recently, uh, you know, flashes of growth in various segments, sectors, subsectors, as evidence that finally that organic growth that we've been waiting for is, uh, is starting to happen. You know, electricity generation, uh, 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 you know, container volumes, uh, you know, what, you have, what have you, cement sales, cement volumes, uh, and things like that. Uh, commercial vehicles, of course, I mean, uh, those have been doing well, it's especially the medium and heavy, not LCVs. They've been doing well for about a year and a half or so now. Uh, would you discount all those and, or would you say, well, those are recoveries in those specific areas, but it's not spreading? No, I wouldn't discount them. Uh, the, the way we look at them is looking at this is a, we're a large country, we're a large economy now. And if you were to look back over the last couple of years, you'll always have two or three indicators which are flashing green. Unfortunately, you have seven or eight which are flashing red. That's been the case. That's been the case for India over the last uh, 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 last two or three years. So, for example, if you take the the buoyant data that we keep getting month after month on on commercial vehicles, where CV sales, heavy trucks especially, 
uh, are showing very strong growth over the last uh, good 12 months now. Uh, the reason that's happening is freight seems to be moving off uh, from from rail to road. So so it's, it's moving away from railway wagons into 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 trucks, and as a result, the truck sector is booming. But what people don't point out is we've had now 12 months of degrowth, 12 months of negative growth in railway freight volume. So so what you tend to have is for every green shoot that uh, 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 my profession sort of jumps upon and highlights, and, and you know they should in a way uh, we should highlight the good news just along with the bad news. What we don't perhaps do as good a job as in our in our profession is highlight the other other uh, you know, uh, uh, negative developments which are taking place elsewhere in the economy. Uh, uh, and 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 you know what I've learned to do is uh, I try to sort of balance the two out. And my view is that if I look at data in totality rather than just the green shoots, if I look at data in totality, it's not evident to me that there is an economic recovery afoot. And it's a quite an important thing because if I I suggest to you or to your viewers or to my clients there's an economic recovery I foot a foot I, I'll, I'll necessarily give you a false sense of optimism and drag you into the stock market only to disappoint you six months later as they con as the recovery which never was peters out uh, and, and investors lose money so it's quite important to read the data in a balanced manner in a judicious manner and and my reading is that uh, in totality looking ac across a whole batch of high frequency indicators there isn't any economic recovery that's a foot in our country Sort of, uh, many actually uh, say that, and I'm just going back to something you said earlier, uh, which is uh, to say that central banks, uh, central banks around the world are now saying uh, that they've reached limits to their respective monetary policies. They aren't working. But does that necessarily mean that uh, they're going to sort of pull back, do less, and then that means that the flow of money being pumped in is going to reduce as well? Or that's not the case? I mean, there are, you know, they're doing this because they don't have other alternatives. So they'll keep doing more. And what that means is flows will remain steady. And, uh, you know, money keeps coming in. And one, when, when money keeps coming in, asset prices are lifted. Uh, what's your view there, Saurabh? 